Hello, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the media. Welcome to this press conference. At the Caisse des Dépôts et Placements du Québec, I'm Maxime Chagnon. I'm head of global media relations, and I'm very pleased to moderate this press conference during which the president and chief executive officer, Mr. Chalimont, will present the Caisse's new strategy to face climate change. Chal is accompanied by Kim Thomasin, executive vice president and head of investments in Quebec and stewardship investing. Shal and Kim will make a few remarks to present the strategy, and then we'll proceed with the question period for reporters. So, Shal, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maxim. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you for this important announcement this morning, this announcement on our climate strategy. I am here today with Kim Tomasse, Kim, who you know, who's our Executive Vice President and Head of Investments in Quebec and Stewardship Investing. By presenting its first climate strategy in 2017, the Caisse de Depot was one of the pioneers in sustainable investment in Quebec, but also around the world. Our strategy allowed us to be one of the first institutional investors in the world to adopt ambitious targets to address the climate challenge. I can tell you that after four years, we are very proud of what we have collectively accomplished. We have exceeded our 2017 targets. We have developed a leading and recognized expertise on climate issues. But mainly, our strategy has created investment opportunities in promising sectors that have generated attractive returns for our depositors. We owe these achievements to all of our teams, and I would really like to acknowledge their work this morning. That said, today, yes, we have exceeded our targets, but the world has also changed profoundly and rapidly over the last four years. The most recent UN IPCC report is unequivocal. The climate situation is deteriorating faster than anticipated, so clearly, there is more urgency than ever to act. We must therefore accelerate our commitment to fight climate change and go further. And above all, we must tackle the source of the problem directly and now. That is why I'm very pleased to present to you today our new climate strategy, which aims to, in fact, do two things. First, to increase the ambition of our existing targets and also to innovate to support the transition of the economy. This strategy is based on four complementary and essential pillars to act in a concrete, pragmatic, and effective manner. First, we want to continue to increase our investment in green assets. Second, we want to increase our targets for reducing the carbon intensity of our portfolio. Third, we want to invest and support companies in the highest emitting sectors. And finally, to complete our exit from oil production, which we started a few years ago. So the CDPQ's climate action is unique because we are acting simultaneously on several fronts and directly where the real challenges lie. I'll now hand it over to Kim, who will outline the first two pillars of our strategy in greater detail. Kim? Thank you, Shal. I share your pride in the achievements of our teams. I was privileged to be part of the discussions in 2017 when we were developing our first climate strategy and when we implemented our first measures. I can assure you that a lot of work has been done since then. With our first strategy, we put in place innovative measures across the organization to reduce the carbon footprint of our portfolio. And we have acted on a number of areas that have enabled us to generate concrete results over four years. Firstly, we have considered climate in all of our investment decisions, no matter the amount, no matter the asset class. Two, we have doubled the value of our green assets to $36 billion in the portfolio. This makes the case one of the world's leading investors in this sector. Three, 
we have reduced the carbon intensity of our overall portfolio by 38%. And finally, we have provided strong leadership to our partners and portfolio companies here and abroad. These four major areas of action have been lived out on a daily basis at the CAS since 2017. Our leadership has also enabled us to work closely with the largest international organizations. In particular, with the Net Zero Alliance, founded at the initiative of the UN, and with the G7, where we were the only institutional investor represented at the leaders' table this year. We did all of this because we believe that climate change is everybody's business and that each and every one of our employees is concerned. As Shal mentioned, our actions have enabled us to reach our goals and even exceed them. After all this progress, we have decided to raise our targets and be even more ambitious. That is what we are announcing today. Specifically, we are increasing our target for investment in green assets to $54 billion by 2025. To be more precise, we will triple the value of our low carbon asset portfolio by 2025 versus our 2017 starting point. We will invest more in growth areas such as renewable energy, sustainable mobility, and sustainable real estate. In addition, with our new strategy, we are raising we are raising our target for reducing the carbon intensity of our portfolio. Our new target? A 60% reduction in our carbon intensity by 2030. That every dollar invested by the CAS will emit 60% less carbon in 2030 than in 2017. These two targets make up the first two pillars of our new strategy. With these targets, we are clearly reinforcing and reiterating our ambition and desire to achieve measurable results. At the same time, we are reinforcing the CDPQ's position as a leader in global climate investment. That said, it is clear that the climate crisis is forcing investors to innovate. And that is what we are going to do. I will let Shell present how we intend to take the next step. Thank you, Kim. Indeed, after all that we've accomplished, there's one thing that we know, is that is that the transition doesn't only go through green assets. And that is why we need to go further. The path of transition requires us to take courageous decisions and to innovate. We must go directly to the source of emissions, as I said, which is a decarbonization of large emitters. That is why we are announcing that the CAS is putting in place a $10 billion transition envelope, an envelope which will be distributed across all of our asset classes. The goal is to decarbonize large companies that are essential to our economy and to the transition of the real economy and to build a sustainable future. We will act where most of the work remains to be done because that is where most of the gains are to be made. And it's for the good of the economy and for the good of society as a whole. I, I often use an example that the CAS is a leader in renewable energy, but we know that the production of green energy does not emit carbon. But we have to be aware collectively that the components needed to build wind turbines, and it's the same thing for solar panels, they come from sectors that emit a lot of carbon. Here we can think about copper, cement, steel, or polymers, sectors that we must and want to work to decarbonize. So how will we invest in this envelope? We will invest in companies in these sectors that can be described as first in class. And what does that mean? Well, these are companies that are proactive in achieving a net zero objective 
that have a clear plan, that have specific targets, and that have rigorous and transparent reporting, and an approach that will be accredited by recognized independent firms. We will actively engage with these companies to support their transition. And as is always the case, our approach will be based on an annual and rigorous follow-up that will also be transparent. And this transition is mandatory. It is something, it is a necessary step towards achieving net zero by 2050. In the same spirit, we announced this morning that the case will continue its withdrawal from oil production, which began a few years ago, to complete it by the end of next year, the end of 2022. And the objective here, the philosophy behind this, is to avoid contributing to the growth of additional oil supply globally. To achieve this, we will continue to divest the remaining 1% of our assets in this sector. And for us, this is a leadership decision in the face of, cli of the climate crisis. This being said, our capital will be available for concrete transition projects, innovative platforms to reach net zero. And that is true in the energy sector and in any other industry. So in conclusion, through these four pillars that make up our new strategy, the CAS is once again positioning itself at the forefront and consolidates even more its leadership in the fight against climate change. It's ambitious, but we believe that it's realistic, pragmatic, and above all, I would say it is unavoidable. With the experience that we have acquired over the past few years, we, we've learned that it's very important to set objectives. But it's even more important to know how to get there, what is a path forward. And on this, for this, we have a very clear plan. So it's a very strong signal that we're sending this morning to companies and communities in which we will invest. And at the end of the day, what do we want to do at the Caisse de Pau? We want to invest capital, constructive capital. And what does that mean? It means to combine performance with progress. So combine returns, long-term returns for our depositors, while better meeting climate change, meeting the fight against climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Shal. So that is all for the presentations for those of us who followed us on social media. And thank you for participating. 